So we all know that as we walk around, our footsteps make different sounds depending on the surface that we're walking on. So why should your game be any different? This week, we're going to take a look at setting up a dynamic footstep system that'll change sounds based on material type. So before we dive into setting up a dynamic footstep system, uh, we need to go over first how to set up a basic footstep system, and it's actually quite simple. We have our mannequin here, and we're actually going to open up the, uh, the run animation blueprint. And so if we hit play on this, uh, we can see that the character's running. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pause it, and we can scrub through here. And what we're looking for is the moment that the foot touches the ground. So once we found where our foot touches the surface, uh, we can go ahead and right click here on our notifies and under uh, add notify, we're gonna go ahead and hit play sound. And if we click on that notification, we do get our animation uh, notify window that pops up here. And we can just come in here. Now I've already set up some sound cues uh, for some different footsteps. So for example, uh, we have a dirt footstep and we can go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna scrub through here again to find where the next uh, footstep hit happens, which is about here. And we're just gonna do the exact same thing. Click on that. And we're gonna go back with our dirt. And that's all there is to it for setting up basic um, footstep sounds. So if we save this and move this out of the way, now when we hit play and we walk around, The problem with this though is that's the only footstep sound we're gonna hear regardless of what type of material we step on. So you can see that I've got a couple different material types set up and since we only have those dirt footsteps, regardless of what material we walk on, it's gonna be the dirt material. Now if your game only has one material type, then that's perfect, you're done. But with a lot of games, there's several different surface types. So we want our footstep sounds to change dynamically based on the material that we have. And one of the first things that we need to do is we need to set up our physical surface materials. And most of the time, audio is one of the last departments that gets their hands on the game. So chances are, uh, this is gonna be set up for you, or you can go through the level and see what different types of surfaces you have. Now to do this in Unreal, uh, we come up here to edit and we're gonna go to our project settings and then we're gonna scroll down to our physics settings. Under physics, if we scroll down, we're gonna eventually find physical surfaces. And since we know that we have these four, the dirt, grass, stone, and water, we can go ahead and set these up. And once we've got our four material types set up, uh, we can go ahead and close this window. Now, before we're able to dive into the audio portion, we first need to set up a system that's going to detect what type of service that we're on. So in order to do this, uh, we need to open up our third person uh, animation blueprint. And it's important to note that this has to be the third person animation blueprint. If you try to do this in just the third person blueprint or the level blueprint system, uh, you're not gonna get the right nodes that pop up. So that's why we're in the third person animation blueprint. And the first thing that we need to do when we set up our material type detection is what we wanna do is we wanna draw an invisible line from the center of the character straight down. And we're gonna do this by doing a line trace by channel. So now that we have our line trace by channel, uh, we need to know where the line's gonna start. And we want it to start from the middle of our character. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to right click and we're gonna try and get the pawn owner. And from our pawn owner, we're gonna get its location. And once we get the location, that's where our line is going to start. Once we know where the line's gonna start, now we have to figure out where it's going to end. So we're gonna come off the uh, get pawn owner and we're going to do a vector plus vector. And for our starting point of the vector, 
we're going to take the actor's location and we're going to draw a line straight down so we're going to do minus 500 and then we can plug that into our end location so what this is going to do is it's going to take a line uh, from the center of our actor it's going to draw it straight down uh, 500 units now since we're drawing the line straight down uh, we don't want the line to impact our character's feet so we also want to set our actor up uh, under the ignore so that the line will ignore it as it's tracing straight down so we're going to pull off of our get pawn owner and we're going to make an array and we're going to plug that array into actors to ignore so now that we've drawn our line we need to figure out what we're going to do with that line and what we want that line to do is detect the surface type below us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to our out hit, and we're going to do a break hit result. And we also wanna come out of our out hit, and we want to get surface type. Now from our get surface type, uh, we're actually going to drag this off and we're going to create a select node. Now I've noticed one small problem with Unreal. Now what this should do uh, when we create our select node is we should actually see the different materials that we set up before. If you don't, save your project, close it, restart it. So now that we've restarted Unreal and reopened our project, you can actually see now uh, that our select node does have the proper surface types. And the next thing we want to do is we want to play a sound at the location. And we want to set our location up to be uh, the impact point of that line. And we want to trigger that sound by coming off of the line impact with the ground. Now the last thing that we need to do for now is we need to come off of our select and the return value we're going to place that right into our sound. All right, so now that we've got this set up, we're going to go ahead and close this for now. And we're going to go back into our third person run animation. Now, just like we set up the original notifications before, uh, we're going to scrub through here again and find uh, those notification spots. And this time, when we right click on add notify, uh, we're actually going to create a new notify. And so for this one, we're just going to call it footstep right and we're going to go ahead and scrub back through here again and find footstep left so now instead of playing a sound at that location uh, every time it goes through this in the animation it's going to trigger that notify so we're going to come back in here to our third person animation blueprint and if we right click and just start typing footstep uh, you can actually see that we already have our animation notify events that we just created and we're going to go ahead and create one for each of these so we've got our footstep right and footstep left and we're going to plug both of these into our line trace by channel now to make sure that this is working properly, uh, what we can do here is uh, we can test this. We're going to come into our draw debug type and uh, we're just going to put four duration because if we drop down, uh, we'll see that the draw time is set to five seconds. And if we compile this and then go back into our level and hit play, what we're going to see is now every time one of those notification events happen, it's actually going to draw the debug lines so we can see where the line comes down and we can see the block for the impact point now the last thing that we need to do for this blueprint setup is we need to come over here to our select and we need to tell it what sounds to play when it detects each of these assets now, i've already created the sound cues for our different footstep types for the dirt grass stone and water and all we need to do is we need to go in here to our select node and we need to place those under the respective surface types. So we'll come under dirt and type dirt. I've got the footstep dirt, same with grass, 
stone. Uh, which I've actually set up as gravel because uh, I didn't have any stone assets. And lastly, water. Now we can go ahead and close our animation blueprint because we're done with it. So now that we've got our line tray set up, we need to create the physical assets so that our materials know what type of physical material they are. So in my content browser, uh, we're going to right click and we're going to go down to physics and we're going to create four different physical materials. Now that we have these four physical material assets created, uh, we need to open them up and we need to go under the physical properties and set them to their respective materials. So now that we have our four physical assets created, we actually need to tie them to the materials. And we can do this by clicking on our different materials and opening up the material type. So I'm gonna click on our water. We're gonna open up the water material. And over here on the left, you're gonna see a physical material. So we can go in here and assign this water. Next we'll do stone. Now our grass. And lastly, our dirt. So now that we've given our materials a physical material type and we've linked them to the sounds that they're playing, we've also linked it to the breakpoint that's detected by the line trace. Now we can come in here and hit play. And as we walk on these different materials, we should now hear the different materials play. So we've got water, we've got stone, we've got grass and we've got dirt. Now at this point you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well that's great if I'm applying a material to an actual object or a block, uh, but what if I wanna actually get into sculpting my own landscapes and doing terraforming? And I will tell you that this process still works. There's a couple more things that we need to do in order to get it to work on sculpted landscapes, but it's still not a difficult setup. So to set this up, we're actually gonna create four different landscape layers. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start uh, with our dirt. And we'll go ahead and create that landscape. And next we're going to create one with our grass. Now we're going to create one for our stone. And lastly, we're going to create one for our water. All right, so I'm not actually gonna terraform an entire scene. I'm just gonna create little mounds. And so I'm gonna make a mound for our dirt. Select our next landscape. There's gonna be our grass. There's gonna be our stone. And lastly, defying physics is our mound of water. Now, just like we did with the material types, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on our mound of dirt here. And under our details pane, uh, you can see that we've got a uh, physical material type. And so we're going to go back and just like we did for the materials, uh, we're going to set these for the layers. We're going to go ahead and call this dirt. We're going to call this grass. our stone and our water so now that we've set up our physical materials to each layer uh, we can go in here and hit play and just like we hear with our different material types we can now come over here to where we've terraformed our landscapes and we'll hear the exact same thing All right, so that's going to wrap it up on Dynamic Footsteps. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out. If there's anything you'd like to see in my videos, please feel free to let me know in the comments section below, or you can get a hold of me on any one of these social media channels. I do put these videos out weekly, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Until next time.